Bruder Excavator update number two. Mounting the pivot gear. I don't know if that's the right name for it or not. I'm just going off of what I think it's called. <laughs> so this gear is a 90... It is a uh, 95 tooth Thunder Tiger gear for a helicopter. I will try to find the part number and put it in the description box. So really all you have to do is cut the metal out of it, grind it down so it fits around the outside. What I saw other people do was they use JB Weld because this kind of glue won't glue to this kind of plastic. And JB Weld it in there. I didn't want to JB Weld it so I went with some screws to hold it down. A little bit tricky to get those in there without uh, running them through the, the teeth like I did here. Ended up re-drilling that one so it came out on the inside. That's really pretty simple. Taking the bottom of this off is not um, major pain. You got to completely disassemble every little thing off of it to get this off. All the wheels, the, the little wheels can stay. There's a, a plate that goes over the side of this on each side that you got to take off to get that off. I don't even think I'm going to put this back on. I like being able to access the the hole where it pivots from because I'm going to have wires running through there. That is how you mount the gear to the track frame. You're probably wondering what this is for. The, this little bracket here is to hold the drive servos. So I don't have one right here. Here's a junk servo I was messing around with. This is going to Got to cut a hole in here and mount that in there using one of these brackets, which came from servocity.com. Somebody on the RC Sparks forum pointed me in their direction. And these are some great little, little brackets. You can bolt them down to anything and mount a servo to it. I'm going to put one of these on each side here after I cut the holes so I can mount servos in there and for the servos I left it over there I've got these uh, splined aluminum flanges that go on the servo they're splined in there probably can't see it slide right on top of the servo and uh, this one's not the right size and that makes it so that I can bolt the track sprockets to the servo and the servo will drive the tracks so I'm still working on this part I'll have a better update video of how I'm going to mount the uh, drive servos move on to the servo that makes it rotate. I found a really good spot in there underneath the driver's seat to mount it. It's, everything's all nice and tucked away and hidden even though it doesn't really need to be hidden. You're not going to be seeing anything in there anyway. There it is. I got another one of those little brackets that's bolted on from the underside. And you have to be really careful when you're cutting this hole. You, you can cut this outside circle, the very outer circle, you can cut all that off if you want to. That's not needed. You need this inside circle, but you can't cut in too far or it'll interfere with where the track frame rides on it. And uh, inside, you can't cut any of this inner circle at all because if you cut this tab off that is what holds the boom on. If you cut that off you won't be able to put the boom back on it and use it. 
I almost screwed up and cut that, but I discovered it right before I was about ready to stick the Dremel in there. I ended up having to grind this little bracket, grind a little round spot in there so that that servo fit. And this gear, this little gear on here, is really hard to find. They are also from Servo City. Let's see if I can get a nice white background for you. Here's a pit mat that's really dirty. Can kind of see it's splined on the inside. It's splined all the way through. You use a washer to attach it to the the servo with a modified servo. This servo I had to pull the pin out of the main gear that prevents it from going all the way around. And then on the other side of it there's oh I don't know what it's called, it's a little sensor that senses where the servo is in its rotation. You take that out with everything hooked up to a receiver and you turn it until the servo doesn't doesn't rotate anymore without touching anything and you gotta glue that into place. I'll try to do a video where I show you how to do that also. And that's where I'm at for now. I've got I found a really nice spot for the BEC underneath this little vent over here and it's right next to another vent so we'll get some airflow and keep it all nice and neat and tucked away and if I need to get to it it's not even it's not attached or anything it just gets sandwiched in here under underneath that grill and everything will fit nicely in there I'll be able to put a battery in it and uh, I'm still waiting on actuators. They, I contacted Fergelli's the other day. They're still waiting on parts for the new uh, L16's dash R's actuators, similar to this, but a little bit larger in. Uh, I'm not even sure if they're larger in size. I think they're the same physical size, just a tiny bit longer to make up for the bigger motor, and. Uh, a lot stronger also. So that's where this is at for now. I hope you uh, enjoyed and please click like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions put them in the comment box below and uh, thanks for watching.